Welcome to Lockdown Economy, a social non-profit initiative by Think Tank Alter Contacts to help small businesses and self-employed professionals overcome the challenges of the pandemic and reactivate the economy. My name is Julie Jerusalem, and today our guest is Gail Antes, the co-founder of Avenida Pedestrian Delights. Hello, Gail. How are you? Hi, Julie. How are you? Great. How are you? Thank you for asking. I'm also doing great, and I'm glad to hear that you're doing fine as well. So, Gail, let's start. Tell us something about your business, Avenida Pedestrian Delights. Okay, Avenida Pedestrian Delights was actually my thesis when I went to grad school a couple of years ago. Um, what I wanted to do was to create, um, was to bring the Filipino um, street foods that we find here in Mandaluyong to the business centers in the Philippines, like BGC, um, Makati Business District, and, and Eastwood. So that's how that's the, how the idea started. Um, we just wanted to create, we just wanted to experiment if people from those cities will accept uh, street foods coming from where I, I mean, where I grew up, which is Mandaluyong City. For um, everyone, uh, yeah. Go ahead. So yeah, Avenida Pedestrian Delight started as, um, it actually started as a food stall in BGC. Um, and then during the pandemic, it became a delivery service because we had to close down all of our, um, our food stall because um, there were no workers anymore um, and we didn't have enough market um, to sustain it. So for everyone's information, um, the cities that Gail mentioned, BGC, Eastwood, are actually um, kind of like neo-city. They're actually cities that you do not expect to buy street foods from. So Gail, can you like share to us the background? And there are no street, yes? and there are no street vendors and peddlers in those cities. Um, they're not allowed by the city. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay, okay, like, can you share with us the story behind the backpack mission that started Avenida Pedestrian Delights? Yeah, actually, it goes, Avenida Pedestrian Delights started in 2018, but the entire business um, projects started way back in 2012. Uh, my husband and I used to live in Los Angeles, California, and prior to us coming back here, we've been living there for about 20 years. Uh, we have three children. So anyway, so what we started doing um, for a church mission, at least between our families, is we started a backpack mission and we started going back to the Philippines and sponsoring um, small churches and small communities where we distributed backpack with school supplies to um, underprivileged communities and underprivileged students. So we were able to go to uh, Batanga City, in, uh, which is South Luzon, we were able to go to mountains in Bindanao, um, mountains in Pampanga, where we were able to distribute it to the ETAS community. Um, we were able to do it in Longapo City, like different cities in the Philippines. Um, but during our 2012 backpack mission, uh, when we were when we were doing our distribution with the you know to the kids and to um, the communities, my husband was able to speak and converse with one of the fathers of the children who was the recipient of the backpack with uh, school supplies. So the father was sharing with Eric how um, he's very thankful for the backpack with school supplies because it would really help them um, um, alleviate the cost of sending their kids to school. Um, but during the conversation, he was sharing with Eric how hard it is for people like him to sustain sending their kids to school because a lot of them um, don't have jobs. A lot of them would, would have seasonal jobs and then in the middle of school year, um, they won't have jobs. So it was, he was sharing how hard it was for him to sustain sending his kids to school. So that, that conversation really, really touched the heart of my husband and it got him thinking that maybe the backpack mission might not be sustainable. Like it's great. Like you're able to give 200 students backpack with school supplies um and they're all excited to go to school in june but what happens in october when the dad um loses his job um so we had this brilliant idea to turn the backpack mission into a business's mission so from la um we came up with this idea uh to be a, to be a business missionaries which means um, instead of going to the Philippines to 
um, do uh, uh, food drives and all that stuff, mm-hmm. we went to the Philippines to put up businesses, small businesses in the community. So what's the best community for me was Mandaluyong because this is where I grew up. Um, the first business that we had was we put up at the hot factory in the heart of Mandaluyong City. And we started with 16 vendors and it grew to, uh, prior to pandemic, it grew to 75 vendors, right? So amazing. So we had all these vendors um, and the way that my husband um, did it was he was he would provide all the materials, the cans um, for the for your audiences. Maybe they don't know what taho means. Taho is bean cur- uh, soybean curd, yes. and here in the Philippines, it's being peddled in the streets um, with men carrying two buckets, uh, tin ba- buckets um, of taho of bean curds, and they go around the city and scream taho to sell it to the neighborhood. So what my husband did was he designed it the way that to encourage the men in the community to be to not be workers but to be entrepreneurs so we were manufacturers they you order from us and then it's up to you how you would want to market it or how you would want to sell it and how you ever you sell it that's going to be your profit so to encourage the men in the community my husband um provided all the materials like the tahok cans um their first order um and thus all that all of that came free and whatever you earn for the first day you take that home um our hope and our prayer by doing that is to encourage them to come back the next day oh. so when they feel like oh wow i can make money out of this like you make 500 pesos you make 300 pesos you make 3000 pesos it was an encouragement for them to come back the next next day and for them to feel like oh i can do this so from 16 vendors, we were able to um, grow it um, to 75 vendors before the pandemic. Um, so that was in 2012. And it was great. It was doing great. I mean, we were, it was um, ambitious because we were back in LA working our jobs. We actually, our, our background, our healthcare professionals, uh, we were back in LA working our jobs and then the business was going on here. But back in 2014, 2013, Eric had this ambitious, crazy idea to move back to the Philippines. So in 2014, June of 2014, we sold everything we owned, uh, quit our jobs. We left all our family and friends behind. Um, We left the only lives that we knew of and moved back here. So our agreement was we're going to do this for two years. We're that just going to create really very risky. And we have three young kids under, during that time, they oh. were um, under 12, three young kids under 12. So we were like, okay, so we're going to do this for two years. Um, and we're just going to create relationships with these people. And then we hope that by creating relationships with these people that we would create a, um, a, a stronger impact mm-hmm. as far as holistic development is concerned which means spiritually, financially, physically, Mm -hmm. emotionally. So 2014, we moved back here and um, we started another business, which is a junk shop business, designing it the same way, encouraging people to come um, and we give them a thousand pesos a day. And then they go around the community, buy people's um, junk so we can collect it at the end of the day and recycle it. So that was the second business. In 2017, we observed that there were lots of kids of the vendors who needed um, students, who needed allowances to buy their food for school, to buy their projects, um, who needed jobs, but couldn't find jobs because they can only work on the weekends. Mm -hmm. Um, So we had this another God idea um, to create Sorbelato and Soy Bless Catering Services. So from... Um, peddling taho in the streets, we brought it to events and parties. So we put up booths of taho and ice cream, yeah. um, the sorbetas ice cream, okay. which is our Filipino traditional ice cream. We turn it into sorbelato. Um, we did R and D for a whole, I mean, a long period of time, and turn it into and combine the taste of traditional sorbetes mm-hmm. to the. Um, the, the, the creaminess and the 
um, and the way that gelato is created. So we call it sorbelato. So we created the uh, catering services, which is sorbelato and soy bliss. And um, we were able to hire the kids of the vendors um, for weekend jobs. So we were able to pay them, like in the Philippines, our minimum minimum wage is 500 something a day yes. for eight hours. So for the kids and the students, we were paying them 100 pesos an hour for four hours plus 50 pesos food allowance. So that's 450 pesos for five for four or five hours work, wow. right? So that's what we did for the for the kids, for the students, for the college students or senior high students. Um, and prior to the pandemic, we started in 2017, we were doing 13 a month. Prior to the pandemic, we were doing 100 a month, events a month. Um, and then, like I said, 2018, I, I went back to school mm -hmm. um, to, to take up my master's degree in entrepreneurship because I want to learn how to do this. Yes. Um, you know, like when we started doing it, it was purely hard. I realized we can't do, we can't do business pure hearts so i had to learn what kpi means i had to learn what inventory means and all yeah. that stuff and even how to really do the business better so i went back to school to take up my master's in entrepreneurship and i had to create a project or a thesis mm -hmm. and i realized that um what we don't have are jobs for the mothers or the women in our community so i created avenida pedestrian delights because the mothers and the women in the community can't do the catering services because it, it it required a lot of liftings. And um, some of them can't do it. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, even the peddling of the toho, it requires a lot of strength, yes. physical strength. That's a lot of women can do. So I realized, I asked my husband, okay, so who don't I have? Who am I not able to create jobs for? Oh, okay, so women. So I created Avenida Pedestrian Delights because Avenida Pedestrian Delights was designed to be food booths um, in different places in the community, well, in Eastwood, BGC, and Makati. And who are the perfect people to man the booths? The women. Yeah. So that's how I created Avenida Pedestrian Delights. I had the inspiration to create this business specifically for women. Um, it was doing great. Um, it was surprising that people in those community accepted our products. We had um, purely Filipino um, uh, street foods. Mm -hmm. Ice scramble, taho, sorbetes, banana cube, kamote cube, all those things, right? Yeah. I mean, it was surprising. So they, they the market, it, so the, the peop, people accepted it. Um, unfortunately, pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. So all of those businesses, because of the um, the e, the ECQ, I mean, for your audience, it's it's the mandate of the government to shut down everything except essentials. Yes. So, Sorbelata and Soybless events. It's a caring events businesses. From one hundred events a month, it was zero. It was down to zero. Um, we couldn't afford to sustain the food boots because we couldn't afford to pay rent because yeah. there were no workers. 90%, I'm not sure if I'm right with my numbers, but most workers started working from home. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the industries that shut down after that. And a lot of the Taho vendors had to rest because a lot of them are 65 and older. Mm -hmm. And based on the government's mandate, Anybody who are 65 and older can go out and do business. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so we were severely affected. Um, so for a month, I was watching Netflix and wallowing in my tears and sadness that all the businesses had to slow down. Then my husband said, okay, well, you know what? You need to get up there and uh, do something about this because yeah. a lot of the people outside are going hungry. And I said, yeah, um, so when the pandemic hit, what we tried to do is we were giving all of our vendors, all of our servers, all of our employees, um, weekly groceries um, to sustain them. But two months into it, actually three months into it, it was hard to sustain it. Yes. So um, my husband and I had to think of a way 
to create something, to create value, to help these people, at least some of them, if we can't hire all of them back, at least some of them back. So we thought of this great idea of, of making Avenida Pedestrian Delights a delivery service. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where you found us. Um, yeah. <laughs> we started doing it uh, through Instagram and Facebook and everything was um, done through delivery. It was very challenging at first because how do you package taho from the um, traditional cans yeah. into containers? So I have, I hope people who used to buy from us, the first few people who bought from us would watch this. And I want to sincerely apologize because we really didn't know what we were doing the first few weeks. Um, when we would deliver, the taho would be crumbly and it was durug durug. Mm -hmm. Everything was like not perfectly, uh, it was not perfect when we would deliver it. Um, yeah. But now we found ways how to do it with R&D and all that and all the research that we had to do. So now we were able to create Deliver taho in um back, I mean in containers. We were able to deliver um scramble in containers. So we were able to deliver everything in containers. So um we started it in May. Um I have to say that it was a flourishing business during the pandemic because no one was going out. Yeah. So the business was doing really, really great when no one was going out, mm -hmm. when everybody was at home. Um, so that's how it started. That's how Avenida Pedestrian started and progressed to this delivery service. So right now, Gail, can you share with us the status of your business? Like, how is your business doing right now? Um, as far as Avenida Pedestrian delights, because everybody are able to go out now. I mean, you can see it in the news. Yes. It's like, oh, parang walang pandemic, right? So the sales for Avenida Pedestrian Delights is going down. But the Andes dealership, which is the Taho business, is going up. So that's how we know the trend. Mm -hmm. When the vendors are able to sell more in the streets, the delivery service goes down. Mm -hmm. Which is for us, um, while it's sad as far as the business is concerned, um, we are happy because the vendors are able to sell more which means they're able to provide more for their families yeah um sir belato and soy bliss may not be as great as it used to be which is 100 events a month but during december we were able to book more a dozen events a dozen? so That's um if you're lot. to ask yeah if you're to ask me if there's any business that I really would want to flourish again, it would be the Sorbalata and Soy Bliss business. Because the Sorbalata and Soy Bliss business is everyone, everyone in the team were, was making money. The server, mm -hmm. us, um, we would pay our ice cream cook um, 500 pesos per, per, per luto, which means three hours of his time. Um, our coordinator would make money off events. Like we would give, we would give her commission every event. So there were four people making money um, in the Sorbelata and Soy Bliss business compared to the Avenida business, which is just us, which is just me and my husband. And of course, we pay the people, we pay our employees. But that's not how we designed business's mission. Business's mission was designed to, for, for everyone to, to make money, for everyone to create wealth for everyone to benefit from the business. So um, as much as I am very thankful that Avenida Pedestrian Delights flourished during the pandemic, my prayer is for the Sorbalata and Soy Bliss business and the Antis dealership, which is the manufacturing business, to be the one to flourish again. Because if, they, if, if, that, if those businesses flourish, um, everyone in the community or in our team makes money Mm -hmm. Instead, just us. So you know that that's why when I when when I was reading your your questionnaires, I had to really think about it. I was like, yeah, it's those two businesses that I really really want to flourish again, because we had shared wealth when those businesses were flourishing. Instead of just the Avenida, it's just me and my husband, and you know, and the partners. So yeah. So how about your customers? Do you know how your customers, you know, the whole lovers like me are doing right now? Like, how about um, your competition as well? 
we have a lot of competitions. I think after we after we did our well, I don't know who did it first. Um, but after we, um, because ours was when we when we came out with the Avenida Pedestrian Delights. It was amazing. Sometimes we would have 200 items sold a day. Wow. That's how amazing it became. Um, so after that, we saw a lot of people doing it too. But um, we are thankful for that. We really, really believe, I mean, and this is honest to goodness statement, that we are very happy that people are able to copy it and people are able to thrive or even survive mm -hmm. by copying the concept. Because um, you really can feel, when you go out there in the community, you really can feel the hardship and the poverty of the people. If people are able to survive through copying the concept or being a, com a, com a competition of the concept, then that's fine. Yeah. Um, that's fine. That's really fine. Um, I mean, that's why we are in free enterprise because we are able to do that. Um, so we are, we have a lot of competitions that came out, um, but we're perfectly happy and we're perfectly, like I said, honest, a good statement. And I, we are very happy that people are able to survive and thrive. I mean, and really, and happier if they thrive. Um, so I think one of the biggest um, benefits that we have is we are the manufacturers of our own products. So we are able to make money from the manufacturing side to the distribution side, because we have everything. We are from beginning to the end user, we are able to do it. Um, so I think that's what that's, and we are, I think with the Avenida Pedestrian Delights, what's unique about us too is we are selling most, all mostly all the Filipino street foods that you see out there. Because when we see, when we look at competitions, we see just the taho, we see just the ice cream, mm -hmm. we see we see just the tusok tusok, which is the fish ball, squid yeah. ball, and stuff. In Avenida Pedestrian Delights, we have everything. Um, so I guess that works for us because we have all the products available um, that we can sell to the market. And as far as the market con is concerned. Um, a lot of the people that were buying from us are the people who weren't comfortable buying from the street vendors. Yeah. And yeah, and it's un understandable because mm -hmm. it's the pandemic. Correct. Um, so they wanted to make sure that the packaging was safe, uh, the way it's presented, it's safe. Um, you know, of course, compared to the manong taho from the yeah. outside or the manong fishbowl. Um, so it's understandable. And of course, um, I guess the great thing about democracy is you have markets for everybody. And of course, the Manangs would have their own markets too. But um, primarily, our markets are the people who weren't comfortable buying from the vendors outside, peddling in the streets, or even comfortable going out yet um, to buy food from um, the restaurants or going out and eating out. Gail, you already shared a few of your struggles during the pandemic, but can you name three things you need help with? Um, well, I think it's it's there's not much we can do as far as the catering and events business yeah. unless the vaccine comes out or people are feeling safe to come out. I mean, I know even even with the vaccine, if it's really it's really really the biggest thing about the pandemic and a lot of people can, a lot of business owners can um, relate to this is the fears in the heart of the people now, unless the fears in the heart of the people are alleviated, there's not much that we can do. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's political too, unless the mandates are changed that we can we can congregate 50 or more people, then there's not much that we can do. So really right now, um, um, it's really mostly political, it's mostly health, uh, environmental, mm -hmm. and there's not much that we can do. Um, I think right now, a lot of the businesses, even with us, is we just need to know how to gracefully exit and end some of our enterprises and our ideas. Because like I said, like with tourism and all these events businesses, um, it might take a while. It might take yeah. a couple of years before all of them come back to the, new, the normal that we used to have back in 2019. And... Um, unless we accept that or adapt to the new normal, 
there's really not much that we can do. So, yeah, so I think it's really the acceptance that it'll never be the same until the vaccine or until two years from now, like how a lot of um, health experts are predicting. Okay. An entrepreneur who advocates business as mission. She is Gail Andes. Thank you so much, Gail. Thank you so much, too. Also, thank you to everyone who joined us today. Feel free to contact Avenida Pedestrian and Delights using the links in the description box. And I invite you to like this video, comment your thoughts about today's discussion, and subscribe to this channel. In the coming weeks, we're going to share more insights with you, so stay tuned. My name is Julie Jerusalem, and this is Lockdown Economy.